Hi everyone, Natasha here and around my home today I am in my office. We are enjoying the week of no school and not as much work as we just celebrated Christmas and we have New Year's Eve coming up next weekend. So I hope you are enjoying this time off with your family and friends and loved ones. We have had some snow in the last few days, which has been just gorgeous to look at. Thankfully, none of it has stuck, so it's been easy to get around, but it just looks really pretty when I'm sitting up here in my office and looking out the window. So I'm excited to share with you what I have done to revamp and set up my planner for 2024. I have some new things, and I'm excited to share them with you. So stay tuned for that, and welcome to my office. Welcome back to my home. I'm so glad you're joining me today for another video sharing a little bit more about my planner and my planning system. I lit my cozy candle from Jordan Essentials because I just wanted to feel a little extra cozy and warm for the season. So this has a vanilla and cinnamon scent. It's one of my new favorite scents that Jordan Essentials has come out with. And I was so excited that I got a candle for Christmas, but I am going to set that out of the way just so I don't have to worry about that while we're flipping through pages of paper here. So the first thing you'll notice if you've been around for a little while is I have a new cover on my planner and I got this for Christmas. This is from Live Love Posh. And I have tried the Jane's Agenda wraparound covers because I really was looking for something to make my disc bound planner feel a little more secure. I do take it on the go with me to and from work, often just out running errands. So I wanted to be able to put it in my work bag and know that everything was pretty solid, not going to go anywhere. I like disc bound planning because of the flexibility, but I do find with these two inch discs, which are wonderful because they give me room to have all the things. Um, by the time I have that all filled up, my planner was feeling just a little, I don't know, kind of like loose and wiggly and it was just feeling not quite as secure as I would like it when I just used the um, covers that I normally use from the Jane's Agenda monthly subscription box. And I love those covers because they're gorgeous and having a new cover on my planner each month makes it feel like I have a new planner. And that is one of the things I have learned about myself is I kind of need some new and exciting things to help me keep coming back to something like this where I know my planner is a helpful tool, but it starts to feel kind of boring and redundant unless I'm changing things up periodically. So I'm going to keep using those covers, but I wanted a way to close up my planner as I'm traveling with it and make it feel more secure. And like I mentioned, I have used the Jane's Agenda wraparound cover and that really does the job and works well. The problem I was finding is because it's a wraparound cover, you can't fold the planner back on itself. And so sometimes, depending on where I'm working, sometimes up here in my home office or at work at my desk, I wanted to have my planner take up less real estate on my desk. And when I can't fold it back on itself and make it this size, then I have to just leave it laying open where it's both pages and it becomes a much bigger area of my desk that it's taking up, which is what I was trying to get around. So I found this cover on Live Love Posh and it was one of my Christmas gifts. I'm really excited. I love this beautiful kind of warm chocolate brown color and it does have the snap closure, which I like. Now I will say the Jane's Agenda ones are phenomenal. So I wish that this version was available from Jane's Agenda, but I checked and it's not. And as far as I've heard, they're not coming out with it anytime soon. So I just wanted to give this sec this type of a planner cover a try so that I would know if it for sure did what I wanted it to do. So as we open it up, I have been working hard the last couple of days in between family time and opening gifts and even just preparing meals. If you're like me when we're all home and it's time to eat, everybody's like, okay, mom, what are you making? So I've had to kind of step up my meal game here as we've all been home from school and work a lot more. Anyway, so in between that, I've added what I wanted to from the January subscription box from Jane's Agenda, including this gorgeous cover combo. So this is the clear glass 
plastic cover that came in the box for January, the sub box. And I love this gold foil 2024, the beautiful quote. And then the cardstock that's behind it also came in that sub box with this beautiful white peacock. And I think the two layered together looks gorgeous and I love it together in this new cover. I have some of my favorite Jane's Agenda sticky notes here and these are a post-it brand, which I especially like because I know they're gonna work well and I've not had any trouble with those. So that's been working well just to have, I think I just pulled three or four of each. I didn't want to really bulk up the cover, but I wanted to have some available if I needed them. And then I have one of the quote cards that came in the January sub box from Jane's Agenda, we cannot become what we want by remaining where we are. And that's a quote from Max Dupree. So I'm gonna be kind of walking you through my planner and the updates I've made, but I'm also gonna be talking about why I've made some of these changes and what updates I've done um, for certain reasons. So to start out with, before I start flipping through, I have to give a big shout out and thank you to Stephanie from Squared Plans. I watched her video from, I think it was about six to eight weeks ago. She did a video walking through her planner system and how she uses her planner and how it's set up to be the most functional for her. And it was a huge eye opener for me. It was really a good light bulb moment because it helped me slow down and think about my planner. And this is something that I think has been a challenge for me for a long time. I know that I like the disc bound planning system because of the flexibility, because of the things I mentioned before that I can change it up, I can make it feel fresh and new. But what I've always struggled with is how to use it the most efficiently, how to find things most effectively, and it, you know, making it feel like it's still working for me and not becoming just this big cumbersome collection of things. <laughs> so over the years, I've done lots of systems with tabs and dividers, and I think that's just kind of how my brain works really well, is if I know there's a certain project or a certain thing, then I want to have it in its own divider and kind of tabbed off where I can just flip to it and find it. So what I had previously were some of these same tabs. So a lot of these have stayed the same. Like I have on the side, these side tabs, which are from Jane's Agenda. These were in a sub box, these clear glass side tabs. And I've labeled them. So I have different categories of my life labeled on the side. But the piece that I was missing from this whole system that Stephanie really opened my eyes to was how I function in my planner. So what I've done based on her um, idea and what she does is I've added a whole section of top tabs and these top tabs are what guides me through my planner on a daily basis. So when I open my planner each morning, I've tabbed off all the different areas that I know I want to check in, take a look at, update, whatever the case is, all along the top. And this is, again, something that I think I was struggling with is I knew like I'd get certain inserts from the Jane's Agenda sub box and I'd think, oh, this is great. For instance, the inbox insert and I stuck it in my planner when we got it. And then I was thinking, okay, so it's in my planner, but if I don't remember to go in and use it or to flip through and find it, then what's the point of having it? Because it's kind of a new system for me. And so sure enough, I put it in my planner and then I never really went back and used it. So what Stephanie talked about was how Anything that you know you want to make sure you're looking at on a regular basis to have those top tabs and really set up this system where the top tabs are the things I want to look at daily. And the other thing I like about this is it's essentially kind of like a habit tracker, but it's a physical one. So I physically can flip through each of these tabs and I'll talk about them in a minute and how I have them set up. And once I've gotten through all of the tabs, then I know I've checked in on all of the important things I wanted to look at each day or the projects or whatever the case may be. But it makes it where I'm not going to forget anything and it's not going to ju just be buried in my planner and I never look at it. Then I set up the side tabs, which essentially this is how they were. My side tabs are my life category. So these are the broader collections on the side. And I did add these monthly tabs and I'll talk about those two when I get to that. So I have all 12 months plus my categories here. I have personal projects, home, budget, business, reference, and blank. 
And then the third element to this system is anything on the bottom is sort of a subcategory to one of these broader categories. So I have my Jordan Essentials business tabbed off here on the bottom. I don't know how well you can see that, but I have Jordan Essentials. This is my YouTube and social media. And then this is a couple of my side jobs. And then some of the other different pages that I often go to or I'm looking for are also tabbed down here on the bottom. So that makes it where I can find those when I need them, just like I can find these different sections on the side or the different monthly calendars when I'm looking for those. But that's a different way of using my planner as compared to when I'm checking in every morning and making my plans for the day, what are the things I wanna look at? So hopefully that all makes sense that I've essentially set up my planner now with these three different tab systems. My top tabs are my daily routine, my side tabs are my reference information in my different life categories, and my bottom tabs are some sub projects or sub elements to those life categories. And this has just completely changed how I think about my planner now. I no longer have that feeling of the fact that I might be losing something because anytime I have a new system I wanna add, I know that I can just make another top tab and that way I'll not forget to check in on it. And this, this again will work great for things like my habit tracker, like my routines that I want to make sure I'm actually doing these things every morning. And the only way to do that is if I actually look at this list. But I had made myself a really nice habit tracker checklist in November, and I used it for about three days. And then I had a day where I was busy and I forgot to go in and check it. And then it was like, that was it. I've never looked at that checklist again. So now I don't have to remember. I just have to go through the top tabs. Okay, I'm just really excited about that, so I know I'm going on about it, but I just wanted to share that in case you're like me and you've struggled with how to make your planner the most useful and helpful that it can be. All right, as we're going through that, I'm going to talk about a couple of other things. So I have my Jane's Agenda cover, and I've been watching Jane's Agenda's YouTube videos where she's doing Master Plan Mondays, and that's been another really helpful thing because... I think one of the other things that I struggled with, especially this year, my schedule was busier. I had an additional side job that I took on and it just added a lot to my plate. And I felt like I was constantly feeling the shoulds. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. I should be working on things at home. I should be working on things for this business or that business or my Jordan Essentials or whatever. And I felt like I was just often really stressed and overwhelmed and not really getting a lot done or being effective, except if there was a deadline, then I would get that done. But it just wasn't a great way to function. And a couple of weeks ago in the Jane's Agenda Master Plan Monday video, she was talking about productivity and time management. And it, again, was another light bulb moment for me when she talked about using your time the best that you can use it, but it's by making choices. And so I've shifted my mindset to think differently about my time and my task list. And what Jane talked about is if you're choosing to rest, you can choose to rest and say this next two hours, I'm watching this movie. I might be folding a load of laundry, but that's what I'm doing with my time and I'm being intentional about it. And once I stopped thinking that I was constantly supposed to be checking things off my to-do list and instead just started thinking about what do I want to be doing in this moment? What am I choosing to do right now? Am I choosing to work on a project? Am I choosing to work on YouTube and social media? Am I choosing to work on a home you know, decluttering thing or laundry? Am I choosing to rest or to read a book? But by giving myself the power back by saying I'm making this choice and I'm choosing how I'm spending my time. It has really shifted my thinking and helped me feel so much less overwhelmed when I look at my planner and my to-do list. So having said that, I've got, we'll continue on here. So I've got this, which is just kind of a reference page that I use for a lot of things. Um, so that just stays in my planner. Now, one of the first tabs we have here at the top is this 2024 overview. And behind here, I can show you some of it, but not all of it. I basically have this little quick glance uh, calendar. And I think I cut this out of the back of my 
um, wall calendar. I get the farmer's, old farmer's almanac wall calendar every year, the gardening one. And this is like the half of the back of the wall calendar, but I just like it because it's so compact. And so I have that in there. And behind that, I have my daughter's school schedule for the entire year. I have our PSR schedule for the entire year. I have my uh, new schedule because I just started becoming a Eucharistic minister at church. And so now I have a schedule for that where maybe once or twice a month, I need to know that I have to be at mass because I'm the Eucharistic minister that day or one of them. Um, I feel like there's another schedule in here. Oh, I have another one from her, from my daughter's school. That's just all the different events each month. So I have all of those overview reference calendars behind here. Now, at some point I may get all the information added to the calendar section of my planner and not need those pages, but it helps me to just flip through. Sometimes if you're doing future planning, like trying to set a vacation, it's just nice to be able to look at the whole year at a glance, you know, look at my daughter's school calendar and say, okay, this is the window of opportunity that we have for that. Okay, then the next thing after all of those um, annual calendars, I have these card stock dividers that came in the Jane's Agenda, I think December subscription box. And I thought these were so helpful. Again, as I'm setting my planner up for a new year, but just in general, as you're thinking about planning ahead to have this little reference card to go to. So we have annual reminders, we have seasonal reminders, quarterly reminders. And so those are in there. Then I have my current personal year information. And this comes from my Louise Hay Colors and Numbers book. So if you've been around, you know, I use that for several different things like my word of the year, my wardrobe each day, my affirmation, lots of ways that I use that. So this is the one for 2023. I need to do my one yet for 2024. So when I do, it'll just go in here as well. But that's the last thing in that overall annual calendar tab. So this tab isn't necessarily one that I have to check in on every day, but I wanted to be able to find it and know where it was. And this is how Stephanie had her planner set up. And I just thought that was a really smart way to have that reference information in a good spot where you can find it when you need it and to have everything all together for the year. So I have that annual one up front. The next tab I created was my inbox tab. And these are the dividers that came from Jane's Agenda. I believe we got these in the November subscription box, November or December. And then they did bring them to the shop. And so I got extra on the Cyber Week sale. And then I just used some washi tape for right now to write at the top because I'm not sure what I, I wanted to make it flexible so if I change my mind about what this tab should be called I can always change that later so I just use some washi tape my inbox tab now has my getting things done inbox um, insert and this is a Jane's agenda one but now I know where it is I know where to find it it's not necessarily something I'll use every day but when I need it I know it's right at the front of my planner and it has its own tab so I can find it so earlier this morning I was working on some other things in my office I did think of a couple things that I just wanted to add to that so that I could get them in my planner at some point so it's just helpful to have that easily accessible now we get into what's essentially going to be my morning or daily routine in my planner. So I have this My Routines tab, and I stuck that to this beautiful cardstock. I picked that up on the Cyber Week sale because I think this was a subscription box before I started subscribing, and I just thought it was beautiful with that little coffee and the book and all that cozy stuff there. So this is a cleaning checklist. I think I... I, after I got it all finished and printed, I realized I wanted to change the title. So I think I just changed it to, I don't know if I did like my checklist or weekly checklist. It's not necessarily all cleaning things. It's sort of my, oh, I think I called it routines. So it's called routines checklist now. So the next time I print it, it'll be updated. And this was just something I created in Canva. I had found a template and then changed it up to make it work for me. But in the past year with all of the decluttering videos I've done, I've made some really good progress, but I'm feeling the need to get back to my fly lady roots, get back to my fly lady systems because 
I know that when I use those, it just works better for my brain. I don't have to think so hard. I don't have to motivate myself and talk myself into it. It just becomes routine and habit. And I get up and do things because I know it's Tuesday. And that's the thing I do on Tuesday. So I have my daily checklist and enough for the seven days of the week. I have a place for some meal planning if I need it. And then I have my days of the week checklist based on the Fly Lady system and a couple of blank boxes that I can just use for notes or whatever the case may be. And I made a spot at the top where I can write the week that we're in and the zone that we're in because the Fly Lady system zone changes week by week. So that'll just remind me of that. And then I have my zone cleaning checklist. So this will be for the whole year. And this was something I've done in the past. This past year, I didn't really use it because I didn't have a place to find it. And I just sort of buried it in a pile. So now I know where to find it. And when I'm doing my different zones, let's see, where's the second? There we go. I can have all my zone cleaning tasks listed and easily get those done. And then this was something I started, I think in October, was my 30-day money cure. Um training from Carol Tuttle over at the, I think it's liveyourtruth.com. And I do want to finish it, but again, it was something that I didn't have a place to remind me to go back and check in and do it. So now I have that. Then this blank page is here because I still need to add my December personal number. So again, that will come from this Louise Hay book. And I'm working on setting that up today. That was, these are some of the things that I just never got to for this month of December. I did do my uh, December Oracle and monthly astrology prediction so that I had those in there all month long and then this is the beginning of my monthly planning pages so I've made some progress on a lot of things of course there's still more to do you can see this is how my monthly calendar page has filled out for the year and all the different events that we had and I did manage to get my memory page done so that was good and whoops this is supposed to be okay so this is the next tab so so far we if we're looking at the tab system i have my routines tab first so there's my routines tab and then right behind it the next tab is my monthly overview tab and i did this in a different tab for two reasons i wanted to be able to easily flip to to this page with a tab, but I didn't want it to be one of these opaque tabs that was gonna be covering half the month. I really like being able to see the whole month. And in the January subscription box from Jane's Agenda, we got this beautiful, clear butterfly uh, page finder that says Flourish. So I thought, well, this is perfect. I can easily just move that little butterfly out of the way, but it's a much smaller, basically divider or page finder and it lets me still see the majority of my calendar easily at a glance and I also kind of liked that this tab is a little bit different size and shape from the rest of these because I notice as I do my planning and just use my planner in a given day a lot of times I'll be looking at something and I need to see the monthly overview and see the whole month at a glance so this lets me find this page quickly and easily then we're gonna flip ahead to my weekly overview. So I have the daily pages in here and you can see I have not used it as much. I've had you know some days where <laughs> I didn't get much done at all because we had so many events going on. Lately, it's just been a lot of um, to-do lists that I've been using it for. But anyway, they have this weekly overview that comes with these daily pages. And so I made another tab for that. And these, I don't mind that it's the opaque tab because when I open it, it really makes me focus on just this page. I don't get distracted with anything that's over here. And I can just work on this overview for the week and checking in on any plans. And I've decided I'm gonna use this habit tracker to drill down a little more detailed into my morning routine and like my journaling and um, planning things that I wanna make sure I do every morning. So this gives me a way to do that. Whereas my overall routines page just has morning journal and plan. So when I'm doing that morning journal and plan, I'll know to then flip over to my weekly overview to see the detailed steps to doing that. Then the next tab I have is my today tab. And this is one that'll just float. It'll either be like this or like this. But once again, I like that I can just look at the one page, 
So as you can see this Friday, we just have a lot of things we're trying to get done today. I've actually done a few things that I need to check off of here. So I did do this and I did my memories page. I did fill my Joyful Jordan box for January and I got that up and I've also uh, shared it to my VIP group on Facebook. So my VIP group, those folks get to see the next month's Joyful Jordan box early. So I'm glad I got that done so they can all take a peek, decide if they want to change their subscription or maybe add a subscription. Uh, there's still some other things on there I need to do, but that's okay. And this is, I can show you real quick, this is the other reason that I wanted to switch to this type of a cover where I could fold my planner back. So often when I'm just sitting here working at my desk or even down in the kitchen, I'll bring my planner down and just sit it over on the kitchen desk like this. And I just keep my pen there, my friction pen, and I go through my checklist as I'm like working around the house and doing stuff and moving all around. But it just takes up a lot less room being able to flip the planner back on itself this way. So that has been working out really well so far and I'm really happy with having that new planner cover. All right, so those are the tabs so far today. So then the next tab we're gonna go to in my morning routine is gonna be all of my financial stuff. So in the January subscription box, it worked out so well. So Jane gave us three tabs that were top tabs and they are all to do with your budget and finances because that was the focus of the box. So those will be the next three tabs that I go through. I can check in with my budget. So here's the monthly budget page. These are new that came in the subscription box. I can check in with my expenses. So if I have the bills, I need to update that. Or if I wanna go through the individual page, I can do that. And then I can take a look at the debt tracker and make any changes if I want to there. Now, these three tabs I've told myself, and I'm totally fine with this, there may not be anything I have to do in these on a daily basis, but I just don't want to forget to check them. So if I have those top tabs as part of my system, it reminds me just to check in on the budget, check in on any bills that need to be paid. A lot of ours are auto draft, but every once in a while there's that one that you just have to write the check for, and so I don't want to forget that. So having this top tab system will help with all of that. And then that's the end of my top tabs. That gets me through all of the important things that I want to touch in my planner every day. So now let's go back through and we'll talk about the side tabs. Okay, so what I did, we'll go ahead and start with this first one. Basically, after the routines, the rest of the planner is not the rest of the planner, but basically like after that routine section, then the rest of these middle pieces of the planner are all of my dated calendar pages. And Right now, December doesn't have a tab because it'll be coming out soon, but I got the monthly um, inserts from Jane's Agenda, and I wanted to be able to quickly find the months, and all I did was just keep these two pages, whoops, we have our quarterly stuff that comes with that set, okay, which I think this is great. So you've got your task list by month, and then you even have the 2025 calendar pages. So anyway... I could probably take these out and put all these up there in my annual now that I think of it because I think some of those are redundant. So this is the monthly 46. That's what comes with it. But what I want to have in here that I can find are these monthly pages. So I just got some post-it sticky tabs. I like using these for temporary tabs or things that I want to tab without bulking up my planner. So I just cut them in half with my little paper trimmer and then used a corner round after I stuck down the number and I just printed the numbers off on my label maker. So I made myself those tabs so I can easily find each month. And you can see I've already started setting some things up in January which feels good that I can look ahead and already see all the things we have coming up. And I did add all of my weekly and daily pages for January. So I have the entire month of January, the daily pages with those weekly overviews in there. So that's all ready to go. I'm trying to be better about future planning and setting things up more ahead of time so I'm not caught at the first week of the month and I haven't even started setting things up in my planner. And that just helps me feel less anxious about what's coming because I've looked at it and I know. 
So then I have all of these other tabs in here and the rest are just the month by itself. So the month has this back page and then we go to the next month. And by doing these little sticky tabs, they're not super strong, they're not super sticky, but it gives me a way to quickly flip. If I'm doing future planning and I wanna see what's going on in August because we're planning a trip, I can get there and really you know, get that plan in place without too much hassle. And as of right now, there's room in my planner for all 12 of those months, so I'm just gonna leave them in there. If at some point it gets too tight, I could always take out the second half of the year and just have the first half. So then we have a personal tab, and I'm not gonna go through all these, but the personal tab is where I keep my goals for the year, some of my personal tracking information. It's not things I need to do on a daily basis, but it's just, some of it's just like my wish list of things I want to do someday or whatever, things I would like for a gift, that kind of thing. Then I have my projects tab. And my projects tab are things I'm working on. So they're in process, big projects. So I had several pages here that I was using as I was working on my planner setup. I went through, actually, where is it? Oh, so if you go on to janesagenda.com and look at the blog, there was a year in review uh, freebie that you could get through the blog. So I filled that out, which was really helpful. And then using some of the same concepts that Stephanie from Squared Plans was talking about, I went through and just evaluated what was working and not working in my planner, kind of thought about what do I want my planner to be? How do I want it to function? And then worked on what would be the workflow to help me hone in on these tabs and how that system was gonna work. And it was really good to do all that. I even took notes on how Stephanie had hers laid out just to help me kind of wrap my head around that whole concept. It may sound so simple, but I don't know why. I just never thought to make my planner work for me that way. I just kind of felt like I tab everything and I divide everything out in all these sections, but it never occurred to me to make the planner walk me through these steps that I want to do every day. So the rest of these are some uh, other projects that I can't show you, but then we'll go to the next tab. Um, I do have at the back these someday inserts from Jane's Agenda as well. So this is part of that getting things done system. And you can just, I have several projects on the back side of this page that are like, at some point I want to do that project and here's a few notes about it, but it's not anything I'm starting yet. Then I have my home section. So this has things to do with my daughter's schedule or notes or homework ideas or even like our meal planning ideas. That's what's in there. And then my budgeting system, like this was a recipe. So I used the January um, vellum and cardstock dashboard as my divider for the budget and I just used this as a sticky tab because I was again trying not to bulk the planner up too much so I have the budget which is kind of a subcategory of the home stuff but I knew budgeting is something I need to be able to find that whole section on its own right away so I have the budget section there and then I have my business section so Again, this is where these subcategories at the bottom come into play. So I have different sections divided out within my business for my different areas of life that I have a business capacity or some sort. Okay, then the next tab is my reference tab. And so these are things that I, um, you know, it's just kind of notes that you take or things you want to be able to get to at some point, but you don't necessarily need it all the time. Like I have my Louise Hay affirmations in here. This is a size guide from Jane's Agenda. It's just things like that, that it's nice to know where to find them. And then the very last uh, section is just for blank paper. I did have to take quite a few pages out because I was trying to keep like three of every kind of paper I own. <laughs> there just wasn't room for that. So I kept some of the more universal and just sort of like empty ones where I could really just start jotting a page of notes and it would be fine. And the best news of all is my planner closes. I can keep it closed with the snap. It feels very secure and solid. It'll travel well and I can fold it back on itself and make it fit my desk and fit my life when I'm working with it. And I can even tuck my, um, 
friction four color pen in there. I could potentially use the pen loop that came with the planner, but because it's so close to the tabs and then when you're like closing it up, I just don't have room. I don't feel like it's gonna work well there. It's gonna damage my tabs. So what I've been doing is this is just a sticky tab that I stuck at the front and I can slide just the um, clip part on it there and then tuck the little bottom end of the pen in there and that seems to work. So that is my 2024 updated planner setup. I hope that was helpful for you to see this new system and how I'm using my planner to work smarter for me and make it easier to do the things I wanna do with my planner to keep up with life and hopefully accomplish my goals and move forward in the important things that I want to focus on this year. So leave me a comment. Let me know if you found this helpful. I'll be coming to you soon with my entire stack of planners and journals I'll be using this year. It's not a huge stack of items. It's just like a few things besides my planner that I like to use on a daily basis. And I'm happy to share that with you because I love talking all things planners and journals. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button if you enjoyed this kind of video. And I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.